Welcome back everyone. In this video, we're going to finish off by creating the supervisor agent. Okay. So this is the agent that we're going to be working on. Click on create agent and I'm going to say bedrock restaurant agent. Um, and let's just say, no, not restaurant, sorry. Bedrock supervisor agent. And over here, remember, we need to enable multi-agent collaboration since this agent is going to be collaborating with these two agents. So we need to turn that on and let's create this agent. In the meantime, while it's creating, let's go back. Um, hmm, I wonder what happened here, but I don't not. Oh, I think that was a that was an earlier error when I was testing something. So if you go back to agents, um, you should have right now the bedrock supervisor agent. As you can see, it's not ready, but you should have it. And the error you saw was probably an older error when I was doing something. So now edit an agent builder and select the model you want to use. I'm going to use Sonnet 35 V2. Now, once we have that, we can provide the instructions. So let's go back to our Google Docs. And here is the supervisor agent. Your job is to assess the user's question and pass it to the appropriate agent for further handling. And, you know, we tell it that it can only help with restaurants and accommodation. So let's paste that in. Let's save it. But remember, we're not done because we still have to add the other agents that we've been working with. Okay, so scroll down all the way to the bottom where it says multi-agent collaboration and click on the edit uh, button. And over here we can add agents. So I'm going to add the accommodation agent with the given alias. And remember with version control, this is where you could uh, try out which version you wanna play with, okay? And I'm gonna call this um, accommodation collaborator. The only reason why I have so many pop-ups because I've uh, created the course and I've been playing around with a lot of it, but uh, let's just name this accommodation collaborator. And let's enable conversation history sharing so that the agents can uh, basically share history. Now, this is where the collaborators come in play. As you can see here, we can give instructions and I'm gonna scroll over here. And here is the instruction for the accommodation collaborator. Now, what's going on? Why do we even need this collaborator agent? Well, let's paste it in and then talk about it. So in big workflows, um, when there are a lot of functions and a lot of agents working together, the more agents, collaborators you have working together, the better it is, okay? So the, the less likely that there's gonna be any hallucinations with the more instructions that you give, okay? So when we previously played with the restaurant agent and the accommodation agent, you know, they, they perform just fine. But over here for the collaborators, we're gonna give, you know, very detailed things to do. You know, the accommodation agent will tell you whether the user wants a hotel or Airbnb, the necessary parameters, and then we're just very specific. You can you can add guardrails here as well. You know, like you can never say anything bad to the customer or, you know, you always want to make sure you're friendly, you know, things like that. And in our case, it might be an overkill to use collaborators, but I'm showing you how to set up production pipelines where you have, you know, a lot of agents. And so that's why these collaborator instructions are going to be helpful. Now, let's add a collaborator. And this is going to be the restaurant agent. And we're going to give it the same name, except it's going to be the restaurant collaborator. We need to enable conversation history sharing. And then let's go back to the restaurant collaborator and copy the additional instructions, paste them in, and let's save and exit. Now, I might have a weird error because I've been playing around with something, but you should not have uh, any errors, okay? Oh, and I don't have errors as well. So the secondary agents are successfully updated. Awesome. So as you can see, uh, it's done. And I'm gonna do another save and exit. And I'm gonna click prepare. And hopefully, 
our supervisor agent is now going to be able to handle any user requests. So I'm going to say hi. I want, no, I'm just going to say hi. And I'm going to say, as you can see, it responds whether we want restaurants or accommodation. And I want to fine dine in Budapest. Let's see what it does. And remember, here we have our restaurants and we don't have any restaurants in Budapest. So let's see what it returns to us. If we show the trace, let's see what happens. As you can see, I apologize, but I could not find any dining restaurants in Budapest in our current database. So let's see what happened. So over here, the user has requested fine dining restaurants in Budapest. They have also provided the parameters and I'll use the parameters to call the restaurant listing. And as you can see, the list restaurants uh, was called. But before that, let's go back. Let's see what else we can find. As you can see, the user wants to fine dine restaurants in Budapest. I should forward this request to the restaurant collaborator with the specific details. Okay, so as you can see, the restaurant collaborator um, is the one that gets invoked. Okay, and as you can see, it did everything it could, but it said, you know, couldn't find any fine dining restaurants. And, you know, we have all the, uh, the final response. And then we also have the final, final response of the supervisor agent. Because keep in mind, the accommodation or the restaurant agent has a final answer and it passes it back to the supervisor agent. And then the supervisor agent is going to take that and then it's going to refine it and then it's going to have a final response as well. And that's the final response. Let's try something else. Hmm. Let's say um, Detroit. What option was there in Detroit? Um, fine dine. It should be the ocean's um, bounty. So what if I say I want to fine dine in Detroit? I want to actually fine dine in Detroit. And keep in mind the beauty of this supervisor agent is that we don't have to uh, go into the separate restaurant or accommodation agent. It's all combined. So whether we want to talk about restaurants or hotels or Airbnbs. As you can see, it found the ocean's uh, bounty. Now let's try a last one. Let's go in Austin where we want a pet friendly place and that should be the penthouse paradise. Um, and help me find an Airbnb in Austin that is pet friendly. Um, I don't need a pool or a sauna. And let's see what happens. Let's show the trace. And as you can see the rationale, I'll help you find Airbnbs. I have all the information. But before that, let's see what happened. The user wants a prep friendly Airbnb in Austin, specifically mentioning they don't need a pool or sauna. I'll forward this request to the accommodation collaborator with these uh, specifications. So as you can see, these agents and collaborators are working together. And from the response, we get that they did, that the agents found the penthouse paradise, which is prep friendly in Austin. And if we go back, we have the penthouse paradise in Austin, which is indeed pet friendly and it, we don't need a pool or a sauna. Awesome. So I hope this was helpful. And I think it's super cool because the opportunities are endless as to what we can do. So in the next video, we'll get ready um, to deploy this in production like environment through the internet so that these agents can be called from a backend. Okay, see you in the next video.